If you're watching the news or listening to most politicians, it's a scary time to be alive. Islamic terrorists will launch an attack on U.S. soil soon. A fully formed fetus on the table, its heart beating. Anyone have a, a, a nuclear arms race on the Korean Peninsula? Uh, in many ways, and I say this, in many ways the world is changing. But Obama's not a secret terrorist, Planned Parenthood isn't selling baby parts, and the world isn't gonna end in a piss-soaked blaze of fire. While information gets blown out of proportion for the sake of clicks, views, and votes, we're left adrift in a sea of vaguely scary news. But what are we so afraid of? Here's why Americans need to start thinking for themselves and stop making some of their most important decisions based on fear. Around the age of five, I saw an episode of The X-Files with my dad about a monster that lived in the sewers of New Jersey. For a week, I couldn't poop because I was afraid the monster would pop out of the toilet and eat me ass first. The fear overtook me so intensely that I pooped behind my grandmother's couch at the age of five instead of popping a squat on the monster-infested toilet. We're suffering through something similar as a country. When the specter of some imagined threat takes hold, we let fear and misinformation drive our decisions, even when the facts tell us otherwise. While some politicians would capitalize on these fears to secure power, I am more interested on getting this country back on the toilet. So let's unclog our asses, save a few couches, and arm ourselves with the knowledge to shit with confidence. Okay, I'm gonna dump this metaphor now. We will stop our southern border from being infiltrated by terrorists. It's easy to generalize by calling immigrants criminals, job stealers, and terrorists. But reliable research proves these are isolationist scare tactics without a basis in fact. There is no documented evidence of a terror attack in the U.S. originating from or being planned in Mexico. You are 252 times more likely to be murdered by a person born in the U.S. than a foreign-born attacker. And FBI data shows that immigrants are the community least likely to commit crime in this country. So why did Americans vote for a political party pushing a wall that no one wants to pay for or needs? Oh, that's right, because we let Republicans and Democrats tap into our fears about terrorism, setting the stage for someone like Trump to leverage them into racist, xenophobic policies under the guise of national security. It's just, this little thing keeps nagging at me, which is that there's no actual evidence backing up the claim that Mexican immigrants are plotting a terror attack or that they're any more violent than any other population, but somehow the federal government keeps giving private prisons billion dollar contracts to lock them up. Our own fear at an imagined threat abroad is robbing us of our humanity. And if you don't give a fuck about the lives of people who don't live in your country, check out what happened to Alabama and Arizona's economies when they tried to get rid of immigrant workers. There's no graphic, you can look it up yourself. Look, the unemployment rate is not 5'8 or 5'3 or 6'7 or 7'9. Uh, the real rate's probably 20%. Okay. That's a lie. Unemployment was almost cut in half during Obama's eight years in office. Private sector jobs have increased, and even if you counted people who aren't looking for work, the unemployment rate would only rise to 6%. Despite fake stats thrown around by politicians, the perception of a worsening economy doesn't actually mean it's headed in the wrong direction. But we are feeling a very real anxiety. American capitalism thrives on competition. But from for-profit colleges taking advantage of vulnerable students to gig economy jobs leaving us without benefits, sometimes Americans need a break from the game. We need reform, regulation, and transparency. Because despite what some members of Congress might tell you, throwing tax breaks at aging industries won't help the average worker. That's because talk about protecting jobs is rarely about prioritizing workers. It's about promoting profit. As Republicans, the supposed party of coal country showed us, when they spent more than a year stalling legislation that would guarantee coal miners their pensions and health care. What this creates, Megan, is a great loophole for all the sexual predators and sex offenders. No one's getting attacked by trans people in the bathroom. Literally, no one. A survey of 15 law enforcement officials and government experts from 12 different states showed no incidents of trans people assaulting cisgender people in the bathroom. Even Fox's Chris Wallace cited PolitiFax research into the issue, which found zero incidents in the United States of trans people perpetrating a bathroom attack, ever. Look, I'm gay, which a few years ago made me a deviant of fear in restrooms, but I can guarantee that when I'm looking for a place to pee, I'm thinking more about how much I regretted wearing skinny jeans and less about how fat the dick in the urinal next to mine is. Spoiler alert, not so fat. So North Carolina's HB2, or the transphobic bathroom bill introduced by Dan Patrick in Texas, don't actually protect anyone, but they do put trans folks in danger. According to a 2013 Williams Institute report, roughly 70% of trans people have reported being denied entrance, assaulted, or harassed while trying to use a restroom. And some estimates put the risk of being murdered as a trans person 10 times higher than the general population's. So despite people like Jeff Sessions or Ben Carson insisting that queer supremacists are out here fighting for extra rights, 
Remember that trans and non-binary people often aren't even afforded the most basic human rights. The only thing actually dividing us are legislators lying to their constituents. So how do we combat misleading, or fake news, that leaves Americans afraid, divided, and uninspired? It's gonna take everyone, but it starts with doing the work yourself. Find research from reliable sources, scientific data, or a goddamn history book, as long as it wasn't published in Texas. When Keith Haring wrote Ignorance Equals Fear, he was talking about HIV, but it's a phrase we should remember and apply to today's political climate. While there are scary and violent realities out in this world, choosing our leaders, crafting our laws, and creating community shouldn't be decisions motivated by fear. It takes bravery to seek out the truth. So don't be scared stupid.